Well, hello, friends and colleagues. Um, some of you, I hope, already know me. My name is Mark Brown, and I'm the director of the National Institute for Digital Learning here in Dublin. Um, I left New Zealand over five years ago to take up this role where I was previously at Massey University in New Zealand. Um, Stephen contacted me in the context of this sort of forum or um, range of activities going on over the next period with ACODE. I used to be reasonably active in ACODE myself. So this is just a brief Friday afternoon, very late Friday afternoon, off the cuff video to share some thoughts and reflections which I hope we can also unpack and extend through other channels. Um, I've also got in the background there a little embedded advertising, so I better get my info commercial out right now. Of course, I'm also the chair for this year's World Conference on Online Learning, the ICDE World Conference on Online Learning. And uh, I know that there are a good number of people from down under who are going to be coming to enjoy uh, the delights of Dublin at that time of the year, and I look forward to having a Guinness with you in a traditional Irish pub, perhaps in Temple Bar, for those who are coming. Um, a couple of questions that um, came with the sort of request to share some thoughts of what's going on in the space at the moment. This is very unscripted, but uh, Dublin City University is really investing quite heavily, both conceptually but practically, in what we see of the future. We like to see ourselves as a relatively young university coming up to 40 years of age and from a ranking perspective, sort of a university that typically falls into the top 50 universities under 50 years of age in the various rankings. Just telling you that to give you a little bit of a sense of DCU and the innovation culture that we have. So uh, we've invested currently quite heavily into new models of teaching and learning. Digital technology is crucial to that. The mere fact that we host the National Institute that I lead is an indication of that. But in more recent times, we are only one of seven universities worldwide at this point in time that have um, signed up to offer our degrees online through FutureLearn. Of course, Deakin, uh, I think Newcastle is it down under, Murdoch um, fall into that category as well. For us, um, that investment is very strategic. It took a long time to work our way through the business case. Um, MOOCs for us are not about MOOCs at all, if you're referring to FutureLearn or any of the other MOOC platforms. Um, this is just an evolution. And in fact, our first embarkment into the MOOC sphere, if you like, was with our courses on the Irish language. At the moment, over 40,000 people have done those courses from 136 countries. But we saw it as almost like a Trojan horse of a way for us to rethink teaching and learning. It wasn't actually, perhaps despite my sales job here, about branding the university and trying to promote ourselves. So the original business case was based on innovation. What we're doing right now, um, only last week um, here in Dublin, we hosted the CEO of FutureLearn and some other senior staff with a formal launch of our micro-credential through the master's initiatives. Um, we have our very first micro-credential coming out in the area of FinTech. Um, this is part of a wider initiative that you may not be as familiar with. Um, where about six weeks ago in Europe, in Brussels, we um, launched a common micro-credential framework across the European MOOC um, consortium. And in Europe, MOOCs are still really very large. They're driven with very different drivers, I think it would be fair to say, from the United States or even Canada. Uh, I say that with some confidence because there are a number of reports that have been published looking at what the drivers are. Here, with the exception of the United Kingdom, education is inherently still a public good, and the driver to open access and expand outreach is really core. In DCU's case, we have a mission of transforming lives and societies. So one of the reasons we're embarking on what we're doing is the opportunity to take our mission of opening up access to education beyond the island of Ireland. Um, there's a brief video that I'll probably share um, that you can watch uh, linked to that particular initiative, but it's really important to us that we are linking up with um, a broader objective that the university has or mission, um, which is not just about going out and internationalizing or heaven forbid, just going about making money. Um, in terms of our investment with the FutureLearn platform, we actually had two false starts initially. We, we dismissed FutureLearn um, in many respects. Those of you who know Ireland, because at the time when those discussions were taking place, 
Future Learn was very much a UK-based platform, so it wasn't perhaps the best fit. One of the reasons we're doing what we're doing right now with the small family of really global strategic partners with FutureLearn, that's the seven now that I referred to, is that we really feel that we can get around the table to shape the direction of where the whole movement is going. Um, the opportunities that online technologies provide for opening access to education and addressing the global demand, exponential demand. Um, there's an Irish expression that comes to mind is that uh, when I said around the table, that if you're not around the table, then um, perhaps you're more likely to be on the menu. So there are very solid reasons behind what we're doing. Another aspect to why we're embarking on um, a micro-credentialing initiative, uh, we offer modules, uh, uh, many modules will be made up of MOOCs for our campus-based students. Um, I haven't got time to fully elaborate, but in part, we want to internationalize the curriculum so that campus-based students can be part of a wider cohort. Why would we recreate courses when they already exist in the form of MOOCs that we can plug into our formal modules as these mini modules? Um, another reason why we would be doing that with campus-based students is in the future, we think learning how to be an online learner is a learning outcome itself that all university students need or any student that's coming through the higher education system because we're all going to have to be lifelong and life-wide learners and digital technologies of one form or another and ones that we don't even know about right now will be a crucial part to that. So in summarizing, I guess what we're doing at DCU and the wider context of the micro-credential movement how new technologies, particularly MOOCs, are influencing higher education. There are, uh, tend to be uh, a polarized response to MOOCs. That's certainly uh, my experience. Um, there's a very big difference between uh, what's going on across the Atlantic, if you like. And in our case, the drivers are really still linked to drivers about opening access to education. At DCU, we first hosted the National Center for Distance Education over 30 years ago. So it's really deep in the DNA of this university to be using these new technologies to figure out how we can come up with new models of teaching and learning to address some of the challenges that we face. Um, I guess uh, a couple of the other questions that spring to mind about what's really going on um, and the challenges that universities are facing right now I'm often asked when I'm back down under what are the big differences between, um, shall we say, Australasian universities and, and Europe, which Ireland is very much part of Europe. Um, well, probably the single biggest difference is education here is still inherently a public good. And so in the Irish system, we still have a free fees model, as in very many parts of Europe, um, some countries completely free. So I think um, that's something quite a revelation when I first came here. Uh, compared to perhaps what many of you experience today. It changes the thinking, it changes um, perhaps some of the drivers for innovation, for better and worse. Uh, perhaps we're not as business-like as you might be in your part of the world, but then sometimes um, that also allows us to do things that don't necessarily always have to have a financial return. Or to have the luxury to innovate, perhaps the example I've been describing with FutureLearn, where hand on heart I've been unable to really make any guarantees about where this might end up because we can't simply predict the future. Um, I'm not sure if there's much more I can add at this point other than we would really look forward to welcoming anyone here in Dublin. Dublin uh, is really a hothouse of activity in the IT industry. Um, you may be aware that we have the head office for LinkedIn, the world head office for Twitter, um, major offices for Apple, Google, Microsoft, uh, the companies just keep rolling off and more and more are moving here um, for various reasons, some of which link to the taxation system as much as anything. But Ireland also has the highest educated uh, population of any European country now. And in addition, another fact, sounds like I'm doing a bit of a sales job here for Ireland, it's a great place to live and work, um, Dublin here in particular. But something compared to maybe even when you were here last, now Ireland has the most ethnically diverse population of any European country. It's really welcomed immigration. And at Dublin City University, we're very proud of two other aspects. One is we were the world's first um, uh, age-friendly university, helped establish the age-friendly network. Um, 
aging is seen as an asset, not as a deficit. We've hosted two years running the World Age Friendly Conference, University Conference, and the second, we were Ireland's very first University of Sanctuary. And so just yesterday, I had the privilege of being able to manage a press release with new announcement around 20 scholarships for study. Um, this is the third year we've been doing this for refugees and asylum seekers. And 15 of those scholarships this year were for online study because many of the refugees and um, asylum seekers don't have the opportunity to get out and about in the way that we might be used to. So that's just another sense in which the way new technologies are being used at DCU, very much with the money on the mission, if you like. The mission being transforming lives and societies. That's probably a good note for me to stop. Hopefully in all that Friday afternoon rambling, there's something here to at least put a human face into some ideas in a rather garbled way. But um, I'm looking forward to following up, whether that be online in um, text-based interaction or perhaps in a synchronous session at some stage. Kia ora.